Hey, I'm Vlad with Glow Marble, and I'm gonna give you an in-depth look on how to cast artificial stones using concrete. First thing you gotta do is decide which stone you wanna cast. Our website has a bunch of options for mosaic stones, um, wall stones, and paver stone molds for your floor. The second step is deciding which concrete to use. Store-bought concrete's pretty good because it's really cheap and everything's already mixed up together. Meaning all the aggregates, like the sand and the gravel, which act as the strength of the concrete, plus the cement, which acts like the glue that keeps everything together. The downside to the store-bought concrete is that they usually never tell you the amount of cement the bag has. That's bad because most additives are dosed based on the cement weight and not on the concrete weight as a whole. Those additives can range from pigments to super plasticizers. We're gonna talk about these a little bit later though. For instance, here's a bag of our pigment, number 5844, and depending on how much of it you add, you're gonna get a different color. The website says that to get the color Western Gold, you're gonna need one and a half pounds of the pigment for a 94 pound bag of the cement. If you want the color Autumn Gold, you're gonna need three pounds instead of one and a half. So for instance, instead of risking it using the store-bought concrete, I like to make my own and I'll show you how to do that right now. So for this, all we'll need is some mason sand and some cement. I wanna skip the gravel altogether because it doesn't play that big of a role on the hardness and the strength of the concrete. And plus this mixture that I'm gonna be using is a lot easier to use. I'm gonna be adding two parts sand to one part cement. So that means six pounds of sand, and three pounds of cement. Now you're ready to mix, and I like adding the sand into the bottom of the bucket instead of the cement, because the cement tends to stick to those bottoms and sides a lot more. And now you could start mixing all this by hand, but I like using mechanical mixers a lot more. They get the job done a lot quicker, especially for large batches, and we sell both economy mixers and very high quality German mixers. So I'll just pre-mix all the dry materials. And then add in your water. For the three pound cement mix that I'm using, I'm gonna add 12 ounces of water. And now you can see how unworkable this concrete is, and that's because there's not enough water. The problem is the more water you add, the weaker the concrete is gonna become. And that's where the super plasticizer comes in. It makes it a lot more workable without having to add more water, and you only need 1% of it for cement weight. Also, never forget to scrape the sides and the bottom of the bucket because there's gonna be a lot of unmixed material around there and you don't want that, like you see over here. I'm gonna be using our mosaic mold, MS871, and always remember to have a separate platform underneath the mold so that you can move it around and take it wherever you need to go. Next, we're gonna need a mold release so that the concrete doesn't stick to the mold. Our product for this is G1, which is concentrated, means that it's gonna last a very long time and it's cheaper than most of the competitor prices. The dilution rate is 30 parts water to one part G1. You could use it in a regular sprayer, but you're gonna end up losing a lot more of the release agent like this because the particles coming out of the sprayer are way too big. They're like water droplets. Instead, I like using the non-aerosol sprayer because it shoots a very fine mist into the air and you do not need a lot to make this release work. So all I'm gonna do is go in one pass and that's it. Now we can start pouring the concrete into the form. Now that you got the form filled all the way to the top, you're gonna to need to vibrate it to remove all those bubbles. You could keep moving it back and forth 
You could take a hammer and start banging under the table. But those are the least effective ways and usually there's still bubbles. Instead, I'm gonna be using a vibration table, which is the fastest and most effective way. Assuming that you're just starting out um, and you can't afford one of these, you could just make a makeshift vibration table at home with just the motor. I'm gonna link that video on one of the corners of your screen. Uh, click on that afterwards. Next is cleaning your mold up a little bit because it's a lot easier to do this while the concrete is still fresh than when it dries and the same thing applies to all your tools. Now the last thing you gotta do is cover it with plastic because the concrete gets a lot stronger the more moisture it retains while curing. Leave it in the plastic for 24 hours and then you're gonna be ready to demold. Also never install the panel before seven days of demolding because the concrete's still shrinking and it still has a lot of moisture inside of it. This video is part one. In part two, I'm gonna show you how to color these stones. The form is cured, so now it's time to take the plastic off and demold. The uh, easiest way, for me at least, is to flip this upside down and demold that way. The color is initially a lot darker than it's gonna end up because it still has a lot of that moisture inside of it. And to properly cure it, you're gonna have to put it up on two stilts just like this so that the entire form basically has airflow and isn't getting any moisture trapped because it's sitting on a flat surface. You also gotta know that the longer you wait to demold, the harder it's gonna be to take the concrete out of the form. I took this one out over the weekend and here I'm gonna show you what it looks like taking one out literally the next day after casting. Be sure to check out the next video on how to actually color these stones in different ways. You can do a lot of pretty cool stuff with these. And also the video on the homemade vibration table. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe.